Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Kramer. Congratulations on bringing home a new member of the family. You're about to begin the fun and rewarding journey of raising a new puppy. Whether you have dog experience or if this is your first pup, this video will help you get the most current information about how to raise your new friend. If you have any questions during or after your visit, feel free to ask one of the doctors or nurses. We're here to help. There is so much information to digest as a new pet parent about the medical and preventive care for your new puppy. One way to simplify this process is to understand our available wellness packages. Wellness packages allow you to split up the cost of your pet's medical care into convenient monthly payments. By trusting us with the next year of your pet's care, you become part of the club and you will enjoy significant discounts on all of those services, including unlimited office visits. With unlimited office visits, you'll have the peace of mind that you can bring your pet in anytime without the concerns of paying for each and every visit. You'll even get a discount on the treatment plan presented if there is indeed a problem where medical care is needed. Ask our customer care representative for more details. Let's start with vaccines. We group vaccines into two categories, core and non-core vaccines. Core vaccines are vaccines that are highly recommended or mandatory in our state. Non-core vaccines are those where the individual pet's lifestyle and environment need to be analyzed by your veterinarian as to their importance. We will discuss core vaccines and non-core vaccines that are important in our area. During your visit, we will provide you with a puppy vaccine book to help you keep track of what your pet needs. Also remember, your new puppy still has a weak immune system, so please limit their contact with other dogs until they are well into their vaccine program. And lastly, we have late hours of operation for your convenience, but please try to bring your pets in for their vaccinations early in the day, so if they were to have a rare allergic reaction, we can see them at our location and avoid a possible expensive and inconvenient emergency room visit. Hi, I'm Dr. Joyce Ashimala. The distemper combination vaccine, also known as the DAPP vaccine, includes canine distemper virus, adenovirus, parvovirus, and parinfluenza. This combination vaccine protects against some of the most common and contagious viral diseases in dogs. Canine distemper and parvovirus are both serious and often fatal diseases affecting multiple organ systems, requiring a lengthy hospitalization and usually a guarded to poor prognosis. Vaccination against adenovirus type 2 virus protects against canine hepatitis, and vaccination against parinfluenza helps protect against tracheobronchitis. Typically, Vaccination starts at six to eight weeks of age and continues every two to three weeks for a series of three to five injections. The final vaccine needs to be at 16 weeks of age or older to ensure that their immune system can maintain the antibodies for a full year. This is followed by a booster one year later. Adults with previous immunization need revaccination every one to three years, depending on the type of vaccine used. Please limit your pup's exposure to other dogs or places other dogs visit until seven to 10 days after the second dose of DAPP. I'm Dr. Keith True. Rabies virus can be transmitted to mammals, including humans, usually through bite wounds from an infected animal. Most commonly infected animals in the surrounding area are raccoons and bats. Illinois state law requires vaccination of dogs since it is one of the few deadly diseases that can be transmitted to humans. If an unvaccinated pet bites someone, serious consequences may occur, including extensive quarantine of your pet at your expense, and in some severe cases, euthanasia. Puppies will need this vaccine between 14 and 16 weeks of age. Hello, my name is Dr. Alexandra Allen. If your dog frequents dog parks, dog shows, boarding facilities, daycare, gets groomed, or interacts with other dogs, they will need a Bordetella vaccine, also known as kennel cough. This bacterial infection affects the respiratory system, causing a severe cough. And while usually not life-threatening, it can progress into pneumonia and take a long time to cure. This vaccine may not provide 100% immunity from the disease. However, it will lessen the clinical signs and speed recovery. For puppies, a series of two boosters administered two to four weeks apart is required for full immunity. Because this vaccine does not impart long-term immunity, 
some boarding facilities and grooming facilities will require pets to receive this vaccine no more than six months apart. Leptospirosis is a disease caused by a bacteria that can be found worldwide in soil and water. Many types of mammals can carry this bacteria and there are many strains. It can be spread through contact with infected urine, urine contaminated soil, water, food, bedding, from a bite, or even ingestion of contaminated tissue like roadkill. Leptospirosis is a zoonotic disease, which means it can be transmitted from animals to people. Infection can cause flu-like symptoms and cause liver or kidney damage. For puppies, a series of at least two injections administered two to four weeks apart is all that is required for immunity. Yearly booster vaccines are needed to maintain those protective antibodies. Lyme disease is caused by the bacteria Borrelia burgdorferi. Ticks carry these bacteria, transmitting them to the animal while sucking its blood. Pet owners report finding ticks on their dogs in city parks and even in their homes. Your veterinarian will help you decide whether a Lyme vaccine is appropriate for your dog in addition to tick prevention. Lyme disease causes recurrent lameness, fever, swollen lymph nodes and joints, and a reduced appetite. More serious complications include damage to the kidney and rarely heart or nervous system disease. For puppies, a series of two boosters administered two to four weeks apart is required for full immunity. Yearly booster vaccines are needed to keep immunity at a proper level. Canine influenza is a relatively new disease and was first diagnosed in 2004 in a group of racing greyhounds in Florida. Testing has shown that the virus mutated from a strain of equine influenza and gained the ability to spread from dog to dog. The symptoms of canine influenza are indistinguishable from kennel cough. Canine flu spreads aggressively in places that house a lot of animals, such as boarding facilities, doggy daycare, groomers, or dog shows. If your dog frequents any of these places, they have a higher chance of getting sick. For puppies, a series of two boosters administered two to four weeks apart is required for full immunity. Most facilities will require this vaccine. Next, let's talk about keeping your pet and family free of internal and external parasites. There are two major categories of preventives, heartworm preventive and flea and tick preventive. These prescription medications need to be given year round and for the pet's entire life. These nasty parasites can survive year round in mild winters, on pets and wild animals, and even in your home. Let's find out more. Heartworms are internal parasites spread by mosquitoes and are common all over the United States and many parts of the world. Adult heartworms can grow as long as 14 inches and dogs can harbor hundreds of them in the heart, lungs, and associated blood vessels. This causes severe lung disease, heart failure, and damage to other organs in the body that can last even after the parasites are gone, affecting your dog's health and quality of life. And if left untreated, can be life-threatening. And that is why prevention is much safer and significantly less expensive than treating an infected dog. It's also simple to do. We want your puppy to start taking oral heartworm prevention beginning at eight weeks of age. Once your pup is six months old, New developments in prevention allow your dog to be given a long-lasting injection, eliminating the need to remember to give a medication each and every month. It is important that your dog is tested once a year, starting at six months of age, and this can be done at your annual wellness visit. An added benefit of using heartworm prevention is that most will also protect from other common intestinal parasites, such as roundworm and hookworm, which is contagious to family members as well. Fleas and ticks not only bite and cause discomfort to our pets, these ectoparasites can also transmit diseases and internal parasites such as Lyme disease and tapeworms. They also populate very fast and can infest your home and even the bed you sleep in. Yes, that's right. They can also feed on you and potentially transmit diseases to your family. New advances have also been made in flea and tick control that now make it possible to entirely prevent or eliminate fleas and ticks by giving a chewy treat four times a year. When it comes to heartworm preventive and flea and tick preventive, if your puppy is in between sizes, it is always best to size up. These medications have been tested and are extremely safe. Lastly, if you have cats at home, most canine preventives are very toxic to cats and can be very dangerous if applied or consumed. So read the label carefully. There are many opinions out there on spaying and neutering pets. And of course, any surgery on your new family member may make you a little nervous.
but the majority of veterinarians out there know that there are medical and behavioral reasons to spay and neuter your pet at an early age. Let's learn more about the facts. Aside from the very real pet overpopulation problem, there are some valid health reasons for spaying female dogs. Spaying your dog will not change her personality, and there are no benefits to letting a dog have just one litter. Additionally, it is a myth that spaying your dog will cause her to gain weight. There are three benefits of spaying your dog. One, eliminates chances of pyometra, which is an infection of the uterus that is fatal if emergency surgery is not performed. Two, decreased risk of mammary cancer. Ideally, to give a female dog protection against mammary cancer, she should be spayed prior to her first heat. Each subsequent heat brings a greater chance of mammary cancer at a later time. And lastly, spaying eliminates risk of ovarian and uterine cancer. Spaying a dog involves the removal of the uterus and ovaries. No organs, no cancer. Simple as that. Neutering is a relatively simple surgery with a quick recovery period. Besides preventing unwanted pregnancies, neutering a male will help mitigate certain behavioral problems found in unneutered males, and it will help prevent certain medical conditions too. It will not take away his personality or his manhood. The only thing he will miss is fighting or running away from home. Neutered dogs are less likely to mark their territory by urinating and are easier to train. Neutered dogs will be less likely to try and run away, and they will be less likely to get attacked by other dogs. Lastly, neutered dogs will not be subject to testicular cancer and will have a decreased risk of prostatic enlargement later in life. Basically, neutering your male dog can lengthen his life and make him a much more pleasant companion. One of the most common questions asked by new puppy owners is what to feed their pet. Your puppy is your new best friend and you wanna give him the best foundation to grow and thrive. You certainly don't want to unknowingly contribute to anything that might be harmful or inadequate. Here are some tips to help you put the perfect portion on your pup's plate. It is important that your puppy get a diet that is labeled for puppies or for growth. Your puppy should stay on this type of diet until they are 9 to 12 months old, at which time you will gradually switch to an adult diet. How much should I feed? The amount of food your puppy should eat daily depends on the brand of food you're feeding, as each food has a different and specific calorie count. Any high quality food should have a feeding guideline printed on the bag or on the company's website. Following these guidelines based on your puppy's weight is the most accurate way to determine how much to feed. Take into account supplementing your puppy's diet with treats. If you are feeding a significant amount of treats throughout the day, you should adjust the amount of food being fed at mealtime to take this into account. What not to feed. Most veterinary nutritionists would not advise feeding a raw diet or homemade diet to a puppy. Raw and homemade diets are risky for young animals. The risk of nutrient imbalance and infectious diseases are too high during such a critical phase of growth. Also, when changing diets, do this gradually over a week to avoid your pet getting diarrhea. Lastly, there are many brands of pet food on the market. Look for a diet recognized by AFCO, A-A-F-C-O, to know if it meets basic guidelines. Sometimes puppies less than five pounds cannot always adequately regulate their blood glucose or blood sugar levels on their own and may need food intake to maintain proper levels. You may choose to feed a dry kibble food or a dry wet food combination. Small frequent meals are very important for these tiny puppies early in life. If your puppy does not seem interested in the food you are feeding, you can certainly try different foods to assess their protein preference. If your puppy has gone greater than six hours without eating anything, to minimize the risk of hypoglycemia, you can keep a tube of NutriCal Energy Paste at home. You can apply a small amount to the gums or the roof of the mouth. If you don't have the paste, you can always use caro or maple syrup. Clinical signs of hypoglycemia include weakness, lethargy, poor appetite, altered mentation, twitching, tremors, seizures, or coma. If left untreated, this can be fatal. Hi, I'm Suzanne Ward. Even the most experienced and watchful pet owner is at risk of losing their dog. While collars and tags are important and certainly beneficial when worn by your pet, they are subject to breaking, fading, becoming scratched, and even falling off. 
If this occurs, there is no way to determine to whom your dog belongs. Microchipping is a permanent means of identification and the best possible method of bringing your lost or stolen best friend back to you. A microchip is an electronic chip no bigger than a grain of rice that is safely injected just under your pet's skin. If your dog is ever lost and brought to a veterinary hospital, shelter, or animal control facility, one of the first things they will do is scan your pet to see if it's microchipped. Since no one wants to suffer the heartbreak of losing a pet, microchipping helps you create a happy homecoming for lost pets and their owners. Now, if your puppy already has a microchip, it's imperative that you update the manufacturer with your current contact information to ensure your pet's safe return back to you. We're so proud of you for taking the time to learn more about the best care for your new family member. I hope these tips will give you a great head start before your first visit with the veterinarian. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm Dr. Tony Kramer. Thanks for joining us.